Hello, Saints. Welcome to another life-changing show right here at uh, the Order of Melchizedek television show. Boy, do I have a word for you today. I'm beginning a series called Understanding the Order of Melchizedek. Understanding the Order of Melchizedek. It's going to be hard. It's going to be powerful. It will be life-changing. But I feel that we need to have a little bit of worship before we get into the Word. Because you know that worship, I mean, it kind of just softens your heart for the, for the deceiving of the spirit of revelation. So I'll be right back after this uh, worship song. And then we're going to get right into it, into understanding the order of Melchizedek. Hello, saints. I hope you really enjoyed that moment of worship. The Bible says God is looking for true worshipers who can worship him in spirit and in truth. And I know you are one of those. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. It is amazing to be on this network where we are reaching people around the world. Praise his holy name. Amen. Now listen, do not miss any of our broadcasts here on this network. I want you to DVR. Thank God for the technology that's, that's got us there now. You can DVR this show so you never miss any of the shows we are bringing to you because we are the only Christian television program dedicated to teaching the body of Christ how to understand the royal priesthood of Jesus known as the order of Melchizedek. And so you want to DVR us? Praise the living God. Now, if you ever miss any of our previous episodes, you can go to our YouTube channel, Francis Miles International, Francis Miles International, and you can watch those shows that you have missed. 
that have already uh, appeared on this broadcast that are not yet showing, but you on YouTube, they are available for you. I promise to begin a new series today called Understanding the Order of Melchizedek. Understanding the Order of Melchizedek. The Bible clearly tells us in the book of, 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 of um, Proverbs that if it costs you everything you have, get understanding. It is important to understand what you are reading, what you are receiving. It's important to understand what God has made available to you as a child of God. The Bible tells us my people are destroyed in the book of Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Not because of the devil, the lack of knowledge. That means where revelation knowledge is released, no devil or demon can hold you back from experiencing the life of the kingdom that that revelation controls. Glory to God. That's why I'm a man who believes in revelation. I believe that the entrance of God's word brings light and understanding to the simple. So may God give you understanding. And I want to start with the understanding of the order of Melchizedek. I don't know about you, but Jesus is a pretty big deal in the economy of the kingdom. You, you really cannot do anything outside of who Jesus is. He's the radius of everything God is doing. Everything revolves around the sun. Well, the Bible tells us that Yeshua Jesus is the high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. It was actually prophesied that the Messiah who would have a priestly ministry after the order of Melchizedek, even in Psalm 110, when David has a supernatural encounter with God concerning the priesthood of Melchizedek, where the revelation that is a higher priesthood than Levi was given to King David and changed how he operated. He became one of the first kings in Israel to begin to do the work of a priest as a king, and God never judged him for it because he had the revelation for it. See, the difference between David and King Saul is King Saul, when he was operating, when he forced himself to do the work of a priest because he was tired of waiting for the prophet Samuel to come and offer the sacrifice so the man can go into battle. So he forced himself to offer a sacrifice uh, that, that, that only a priest was supposed to do, but the only problem, he had no revelation for it. When the prophet Samuel came, he says, you have done foolishly, and therefore your kingdom has been taken away from you. But David is operating as a priest. Many times we see David even wearing the ephod, that, that the holiest garment in Judaism for the priesthood. And never once does God rebuke David for doing the work of a priest. Why? Because David had a revelation that Saul did not have. What revelation was that? It was the revelation God gave him Psalm 110 when he, when, when he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, Till I make your enemies a footstool. And then he concludes that verse in verse 4 in saying, The Lord has, has sworn and will not repent. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. When that revelation came to King David, it changed him completely. Because he understood by revelation that he was not limited to the priesthood of Levi that actually disqualified him coming from the tribe of Judah in participating in the priesthood of God. But he found there was a heavenly priesthood where a tribe did not lock you out lock you out or lock you in into becoming a member of the priesthood. Divine election was all that matters. Divine appointment was all that matters. And David began to function as a priest in the order of Melchizedek. As a foreshadowing, though, of the New Testament living of all believers. Do you know that the day you got born again, you became a member of the Melchizedek order? Yes, whether you know it or not, whether your pastor talks about it, whether you have never heard a message on the Melchizedek order. The truth of the matter is, as he is in heaven, so are you on earth. And the Bible is clear what Jesus is doing now. He's functioning forever as a priest, making intercession for us under what order? Under the priestly order of Melchizedek. So it's important for you and I, since sense of the Most High God, to understand this eternal priestly order called the order of Melchizedek. Well, the Bible is very clear that we are the seed of Abraham. Yes, all of us in the new covenant that have come to faith in Christ Yeshua, Jesus, we are seeds of Abraham. We are the seed of Abraham. We are God wants to bless us like he blessed Father Abraham. So I want you really to get into 
uh, Abraham's life then. If Abraham is that important in the spiritual economy of the kingdom, then understand why he became important is, 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 is beneficial in our Bible study. In our understanding the, uh, uh, why God dealt with Abraham differently and how we can tap into the blessing of God, God gave to Abraham. Where well, one of the most pivotal things that happened in the life of Abraham is a supernatural encounter he had with a mysterious priest called Melchizedek who appears out of nowhere and then disappears out of nowhere. You know, but he changes the life of Abraham and saves Abraham what is now commonly known in many churches as the Holy Communion. Most believers do not understand that what they call the communion did not begin with Jesus in the New Testament. It began with Melchizedek's priesthood in the Old Covenant. It is important for us to understand the mystery that connects the Melchizedek in the Old Testament with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because the Bible tells, us, tells me it is given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. That is Matthew 13. It has been given to us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. And I believe one of those mysteries is, uh, is, is how, to walk, how, how to walk in the Melchizedek order and priesthood because that is our calling and our inheritance in the kingdom. My mentor, Dr. Miles Monroe, used to say this, that the, king, that the Bible is really about three things. But ever since then, God has said there are actually four things. But my mentor was only given three and God gave me the fourth one. He said the Bible is about a king the Bible is about a kingdom, and the Bible is about the royal family. But the Bible, but the royal system in France, there's a fourth pillar that Miles Monroe never talked about. He said the Bible is also about the royal priesthood of the royal family. Because that is how I deploy the royal family on earth is through the Melchizedek order. Is how I employ them or deploy them for kingdom assignments is through the priesthood of the royal family. So the Bible, therefore, becomes, is, is about four things. The king, it's about a king. The whole Bible is about a king who has a kingdom, who has a royal family, a, and then that he deploys on earth in a priesthood called the royal priesthood of the royal family. There it is in the Bible. The Bible stands on these four tenets. So we're going to go into the understanding of the order of Melchizedek. I know some of you, you are loving this program because you've wanted to understand what the Melchizedek is all about because you've read about him, never understood him, never had a message about him. Well, if you stay with me for the, for the weeks to come, you're going to have a lot, a lot to receive on this priesthood of Melchizedek. The Bible says in Genesis 14, verse 17 to 23, And the king of Sodom went out to meet Abraham at the valley of Shaveh, that is the king's valley, after his return from the defeat of Kirodama and the kings were with him. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of God Most High, And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hands. How many would like God to deliver your enemies into your hands? Glory to God. And it says, and he gave him a tithe of all. Tithing does not begin with the Levi, my friend. Tithing begins with Melchizedek. Understanding the priesthood of Melchizedek will change how we tithe, the attitude we bring to tithing. Even those who collect the tithe will do it differently from the current Malachi 3 model that the church uses for exacting the tithe, they would understand a more excellent way of collecting the tithe because it does not begin with, Mel Mel with Malachi or Levi. It begins with the priesthood of Melchizedek, with Abraham being the first human being to ever give the tithes of honor. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now the king of Sodom said to Abraham, give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. But Abraham said, the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to Lord God Mosai, the possessor of heaven and earth. Wow. That I will not take anything that you give me, lest you say you have made Abraham rich. Saints, do not go anywhere, because I will be right back to continue this revelation after this break.
In this life-changing book, Dr. Francis Miles introduces the reader to one of the most powerful spiritual technologies in all of creation. God instituted this technology to govern the spiritual, social, and financial heirs of kingdom citizens during their pilgrimage here on earth. At the heart of all informed spiritual or scientific research is a body of questions that fuel the whole investigation. In the spirit of informed investigation, this book will seek to answer the following questions. Why are questions of regret so universal and common to the human experience? Is there a diabolical and calculated conspiracy behind many of the tears of regret that are common to the human experience? If God is good and all-powerful, why does He allow the evil and pain of regret to be visited upon innocent people? Why do most people blame God for the pain in their lives that is a direct consequence of their actions? Why are these stories of disaster and regret concentrated in the marketplace? Why do kingdom entrepreneurs lose millions of dollars in bad business deals? Is there a fail-proof technology for intercepting much of the evil that is visited upon humans before it actually happens? This book also contains case studies from the Bible and present-day people that are designed to illustrate the dire need for a fail-proof spiritual technology for intercepting demonically engineered diabolical plans and ploys to interject suffering, loss, and injury in the human experience, especially in the marketplace. Get this life-changing book now. had told me many years ago when I came to Christ in 1989 that I would be writing a book called The Order of Melchizedek that would be where I would be given two honorary doctorates because of the level of content that's in the book. I would have thought you are crazy because I grew up in the assemblies of God and nobody even talked about Melchizedek. Nobody even in the church talked about the Melchizedek order. But one day I was reading Genesis 14 and, and all of a sudden I tell people God went Hollywood on me and everything in the passage came alive as if I was watching it on a TV monitor. And the Lord began to ask me some, a, a barrage of questions that changed my life completely and got me on a journey of studying the subject and eventually writing a book called The Order of Melchizedek. But the Lord began to ask me, Francis, are you the seed of Abraham? I said, yes, Lord, I know I'm the seed of Abraham. According to, according to Galatians chapter 3, I am the seed of Abraham through Yeshua Jesus. He said to me, then how come Abraham is tithing to a man you know nothing about? That really got to me, really got to me. He said to me, how much do you know about the order of Melchizedek, the priesthood of Melchizedek? I said, Lord, I know nothing. He said to me, do you want me to teach you? Saints, out of that came years of training from God and teaching on the subject until it produced a 350 pages book on the subject that's been life-changing for thousands of people around the world because the book is now becoming a classic in terms of sales around the world and the people who have been changed by it. But today is your time to begin to understand what is this order of Melchizedek? Why is it important for you as a believer in America or around the world to understand that you are a priest under God through the order of Melchizedek. What is important to you? Because remember the Bible tells us, you know, that God always re requires an accounting of that which has passed. What does that mean? It means because God works on the basis of foreknowledge, he knows the end from the beginning, he always demands we go back to what he already ordained because that is the future. So the past of God's past is man's future, in other words. So God would sanction the priesthood called Melchizedek. Abraham is the father of faith, and it's not Levi God sends Abraham to. It is Melchizedek. Now, what, now, now in order for you to understand this priesthood, there's a couple of things I, wanna make, I, wanna, I, want, I wanted you to take note. We're not going to be able to go through all of them in this, in this particular uh, uh, episode, but, good, the, but, but the good news is we are here every week. So we are going to continue the, this series as long as it takes. That's why I want you to do Dave here, this just in case you miss it. And if you ever miss any of the episodes, you can recover 
the series by going to my YouTube channel at Francis Mouse International because we end up the posting these TV shows on that YouTube channel as well. The first thing to understand about the order of Melchizedek is the is where he appears, where the, 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 the time of his appearance is important because it shows, it gives us a clue as to what kind of priesthood this is. The order, the Melchizedek, the, Melchizedek, the priest, appears to Abraham first and foremost in a time of war. If you check the scriptures before the passage we've read, there is a, there is a global war taking place with disastrous consequences, actually Abraham ends up losing his entire family because of the war that, that is taking place between the kings of nations. What does that tell us? It tells us the order of Melchizedek is the priesthood of warfare for the kingdom of God. It is the priesthood that allows us to navigate seasons of warfare in the realm of the spirit as kings are fighting for territory. Remember, we are kings as well. We are the kings Jesus is kings of. We cannot really get the destiny of nations to the hands of foreign, of, to the hands of fallen kings, fallen kings of this earth. We need to participate in the fight for the destiny of nations. This is the mistake Abraham made. When the nations were fighting over territory, Abraham was living comfortable by the trees of Mamre, not knowing that what the kings fight over will one day get to your house. So Abraham does not understand him being neutral in the affairs of nations is not going to deliver his family from what is coming. So Lot and his entire family are captured because the country was in Sodom, lost the battle. And, the collateral, and, it pour, and, and Lot becomes part of the collateral damage of kings fighting over market share and territory in the marketplace. So Abraham now is forced into a fight, is forced out of neutrality to, be, to pick up the sword to go and fight for his family. The order of Melchizedek appears to Abraham during a time of war, letting us know that this is the kingdom of priesthood and to allow us to rise and, and rise in stature in moments of warfare and end up returning back from those moments of warfare with the victory in our hands, not defeat. But also the Melchizedek order, this priest Melchizedek appears to Abraham in the middle of the marketplace. Why is this important? Because it shows us what kind of priesthood this is. The order of Melchizedek is not just a, is not a priesthood you can lock down in the four walls of the church because it did not begin there. Remember the time Abraham is meeting the priesthood of Melchizedek, there is no temple system or congregational lifestyle like you understand today, going to church on Sunday in a building. This came on Mount Sinai later when Moses had to build the tabernacle. That's when the temple system was introduced, was introduced to the creation. So Abraham did not have it a so-called church that he went to, but he was engaged, God. he was a man who had engaged God in a real intimate relationship that he was able to define in the context of the marketplace. So when the order of Melchizedek or the priesthood of Melchizedek is revealed to Abraham, it's in the middle of the marketplace. Why is that important? Because many of you watching this broadcast, you are losing in the marketplace. You've got a great time in church. You are a deacon, you are an elder, but the devil is eating your lunch in the marketplace. I mean, every promotion that's supposed to come your way is passing you by. I mean, investments you've tried to make in the marketplace are being eaten right out of your hands. You cannot move forward to help you to save your own life. You need a priesthood that's more powerful than the demonic powers that are encountering you in the marketplace. Can I submit to you? That priesthood is the priesthood of Melchizedek. It is no wonder Jesus representing that priesthood went to the marketplace to look for the disciples. When Jesus recruited Peter, James, and John to become part of his apostolic ministry, what many of us do not realize is that he didn't find them in a church service. They were businessmen whose business was in trouble. They were businessmen. When he found them, they found them washing their nets. 
Who washes their nets in broad daylight? It is because they had worked all night. And the following morning they're washing their nets. Why? Because none of them wanted to go home and face their wives and tell them, I brought nothing home. Jesus knew what they were going through. So he asked, him, he asked, he asked them if he could use their boat. This is my, the Luke chapter 5, this amazing story. And when it was over, he told them, he said, I want you to move the, uh, move the boat a little bit further and launch your nets. They said, but Lord, we worked all night. And right there, Jesus causes these men, businessmen, to have a massive harvest of fish in an industry they were experts in. Proving to them that his priestly order was more powerful than their pedigree in that industry. Friends, I don't know about you, but I need a priesthood. That's more dynamic than the demons I face in my industry. I need a priesthood more powerful than all the landmines the enemy can ever put in my way, in my career, or in my line of business. But if you're a child of God, the chances are the devil does not want you to prosper. The devil can see you coming a mile away that you carry the, the, the insignia of the blood of Jesus and he hates you already. And that's why he's going to attack you where? Not in the church. In the marketplace for the most part. Why? Well, that's why you get your living. That's why you pay your bills. That's why you, I mean, I mean that you, the marketplace is, is an important construct in the life of every believer. So the fact that Melchizedek appears to Abraham in the marketplace tells us that the Melchizedek order is a marketplace place ministry. And I'm going to be talking about this in a deeper way in the days to come. But you, you understand this. The order of Melchizedek is a marketplace place to a ministry. That's why it appears to Abraham in the heat of the, of the battle in the marketplace. I don't know about you, but I need a priest who will not run away from me. When all hell has risen against me because I'm trying to produce a movie, that the devil doesn't want me to produce. I'm trying to uh, raise a business the devil doesn't want to produce because he knows I'm going to use the money for the kingdom. I'm trying to raise a family in the marketplace. I'm trying to pay off my mortgage. The devil doesn't want me to get, to get out of debt. I need a priesthood that is conducive for the battles, the daily battles of the marketplace. And that priesthood, my friend, is the priesthood of Melchizedek. I have much to say about this revelation. Boy, I'm loaded. But I'm out of time, but not out of revelation. That's why you need to deviate at this service, deviate at this teaching, because I'm going to continue with part two of understanding the order of Melchizedek. Don't miss the program. Please DVR it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on this channel every week. Praise God.